All right, now to talk about this idea of the gospel and helping those in need, we're going to look at a passage in the gospel of Luke chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, open up to there and we'll uh, break that passage down a little bit. Guys, let's pause here just for a second because I want to share something with you. Sometimes when we're in church or we're in youth group, we can feel like I got to really act like I know what I'm doing, like I know the Bible, like I'm this perfect Christian. But then reality kicks in and sometimes we're like, you know, I don't really know the Bible that well or I don't know where that book is in the Bible. My response to you guys, if you feel that way, chill out, relax. Hey, we're all on this journey. We're all trying to figure out who Jesus is and walk a little bit closer with him every day. So if you open up your Bible and you're like, I don't know what that passage is, turn to the front, look at the table of contents, find the page number, and then turn there. It's no big deal. We're all trying to learn and figure this out together. So don't feel like I got to act you know, a certain way because I'm in church and I got to act like I know my Bible perfectly. If you're taking one more step closer to figuring out your scriptures and knowing the Bible a little bit better, you're moving in the right direction. All right, Luke chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 14 down to 21. Let me just read it out loud for us. We're all on the same page. You can read along. And one quick note is that you may have a slightly different translation of the Bible. It's all the same Bible, all the same message. They just sometimes use different words. So if there's different words here and there, don't freak out. Everyone's reading the same Bible, just slightly different translation. So here we go. Uh, verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everybody praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went to the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll. He gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, the thing that's really cool about this passage is I want you to take the bigger context. So just flip back a couple chapters to Luke chapter 1, okay? And if you've got a Bible like mine, you may have some of those little subheadings within your Bible. Like mine says in Luke chapter 1, right at the beginning, it says introduction. Then a couple verses down, it says the birth of John the Baptist foretold. So let's just look through the general rundown of what happens in the gospel of Luke so far. And I think you're going to see something really cool that I figured out as I was looking at this. So the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, we learn about John the Baptist, and he's this guy who's going to tell about Jesus and preach about Jesus even before Jesus shows up. If you look in the later part of um, chapter 1, Mary visits Elizabeth. They have this interaction. These are two of the women who are kind of involved in the beginning of Jesus' life and John the Baptist. In chapter 2, we see about the birth of Jesus and how he's going to show up as a baby on the scene. We also see when Jesus is presented in the temple as a young baby, as a young boy. And then in chapter 3, we see John the Baptist prepares the way. And John the Baptist is this guy who shows up and basically says, Hey, the Messiah is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. You guys got to be ready for this. And then he calls out. And then Jesus, we see in uh, chapter 3, the baptism of Jesus and also kind of the history, the family line of Jesus. When you come to chapter 4, Jesus has been baptized and then he's sent out into the wilderness to be tested and the devil shows up and they have this interesting kind of interaction and exchange and basically he tests Jesus and Jesus responds by telling him the truth of God's word and he leaves. So all that happens and then we come to Jesus starting his ministry. Now I want you to think about this. If you were to start something, if you were going to say, run for president, right? And you were going to declare, okay, I'm officially entering the race to be president. That announcement would be a really big deal, right? If you watched the anything from the election last time, people announced it on different television shows or at a big rally in their home state. Jesus, as we read in the Gospel of Luke, is just starting his teaching ministry. So we got to imagine whatever he says has got to be a very, very big deal. He's not just throwing out some ideas. He's throwing out kind of, here's who I am, here's what I'm about. And as we read that passage from Isaiah that Jesus read in front of all these people, we got to go, there's some real keys that we got to pull out of there to figure out what's at the core of what it means to follow Jesus and to understand what Jesus is all about. All right, let's break this passage down a little bit. Again, we're in Luke chapter 4, 
And we're going to look at verse 18 where Jesus starts reading this scroll, okay? So we got the background, a little story kind of of how this, how we got to this place of what Jesus is about to do. He's in the synagogue. He's about to read the scroll, which is kind of the sacred text from the book of Isaiah or the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet. Jesus opens it up and in verse 18 it says, read along with me, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. So pause right there. Think about this. The good news. He's preaching the gospel to the poor. He's preaching that good news to people so that they can really hear what the good news is. But check out who he's preaching to and who the good news seems to be geared to. It says, he comes to proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Then he says, recovery for the blind, recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. All those pictures, all those images, all those words really speak to people who are down and out. People who just had struggles or things have been tough in life. They're poor. They're prisoners. They're blind. They're oppressed. Jesus comes to to preach this good news. Spiritually, yeah, everybody needs to be set free. Everybody's blind without Jesus. But it also seems like he's talking about the people who physically really have some serious needs. That's who Jesus is calling us to reach out to. See, the hole in our gospel sometimes is that we think it's just about knowing the right facts, having the right information. The hole in our gospel is sometimes we forget that you have to know this information, but that information should come into our heads, flow down to our hearts, and change us so that we go out and help these people to do what Jesus said really the gospel is, to care for those folks who are just in desperate need. The challenge for us, particularly in America, is that a lot of us have a lot of things. A lot of us are pretty comfortable. Now, I know different people who are watching this video are in all kinds of different places. Some people may be totally set. You don't have any major needs. And other folks may be in desperate, desperate need. Well, whatever it is, just understand that the goal of Jesus is to bring good news and help to those people. And that the goal of Jesus inviting people into a relationship with him and to establishing the church is that the church goes and helps those people as well. You know, I was thinking about this idea of starting something new, right? And like the first time you do something that you want to be good at it. I was thinking about the first time I played basketball with some of the guys here at Bethany Church. I mean, I showed up with a friend of mine, we were going to play, and I was really thinking, man, I got to do well this first time because if I bomb and play really bad, the rest of the time they're always going to look at me like, well, do we want that guy to shoot? Do we want to pass to him? Because... He might not be so good. So I thought, man, I really need to play well the first time so I kind of put my best foot forward and I can gain the respect of the people as a basketball player. You know, the same thing is true for me and Jenny right now. We're in the process of moving from our old house to a new place. And a friend of hers wrote her a letter and just said, man, it's so cool that you have a new place that you're moving into and you can kind of start fresh. You can establish what you want your house to be like and you can say, these are the things that we're going to allow in our house and these are the things that we're just not going to have in our house. She was talking about or kind of referring to this passage in Joshua where it says, you know, like this day you can choose who you're going to serve, but me and my house, we're going to serve God. And that was a cool kind of image for me to think about. Man, when we start things off, we really want to put that best foot forward. And that's what we see when Jesus teaches. This is the first time he's preaching. And what he says is definitely him saying, hey, guys, this is the core of what I'm about. This is really what it means to know, to follow, to understand who I am and therefore to know who God is. All right, so if we read this passage in the Gospel of Luke and we take Jesus seriously, we see that the Gospel, yes, it's about spiritual stuff that we talked about before, freeing us from these problems and getting connected and kind of sucked into sin and freeing us from the fact that our relationship with God is broken and that by Jesus coming, living, dying on the cross and being resurrected, that we can heal our relationship with God. That's definitely a part of it. But the gospel is about meeting spiritual and also physical needs. It's about helping those who are poor, those who are downcast, those who are having a hard time. And for us in America, one of the big challenges is that there's been a hole in our gospel. For a lot of us, it's been about knowing the facts but not doing anything with those facts. There's something missing if we think the gospel is just about knowing information. I mean, it's like playing ping pong by yourself. It just doesn't work. Something's missing. The gospel without loving deeds to help those who are poor, oppressed, and in need isn't really the gospel at all. All right, so here's the bottom line. If Jesus thinks care and compassion is really important, then anybody who claims to be a follower of Jesus or is figuring out who Jesus is, we got to understand that bottom line, Jesus is about helping those who are in need. We don't want to have a hole in our gospel. We don't want something missing. So for the next handful of weeks, we're going to talk about what's the hole in the gospel, what does the gospel really mean, And what does it look like to fill that hole in the gospel with care and compassion?